Um, so today is going to be um, a little bit different, and uh, um, it's probably going to be a little bit difficult to hear. This is not the video that I wanted to make, but okay, okay, okay. Um, here goes. Crosley doesn't suck. Uh, just want to get right into it. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the best turntable on the market today. And in that video, I basically allude that the best turntable on the market today is the one that you can afford. And I went so far as in that video to even say that if the best turntable you can afford is a Crosley, then get a Crosley and don't look back. And apparently that statement got to some of you. And when I say get to some of you, it, it upset a lot of you. So rather than, uh, I guess, lash out or defend myself, I thought what would be really fun was to kind of put my money where my mouth was and see if Crosley's really were as bad as everyone on the internet seems to believe. Now, let's get a few things out of the way. Crosley, on a whole, I think when you think about their products, you envision these suitcase-shaped or really kind of retro mod kitschy turntables because they do in fact make those. However, Crosley makes a lot of turntables. I'm talking probably more turntable models than I've ever seen a single brand make. So it's really kind of unfair to say that all Crosleys suck. That being said, there are a few Crosley models that I will agree with some of the comments uh, in that video and say that you should avoid them. But there are a number of turntables by Crosley that do look pretty compelling and look pretty good and likely will suit most uh, entry-level vinyl enthusiasts just fine. Case in point, I went out and I bought the C6 turntable from Crosley with my own money uh, $135 from Amazon, and I bought this because on paper, it was the closest facsimile to my U-Turn Audio Orbit Plus turntable. So for $134, $135 with the C6, you get, all intents and purposes, a entry-level audiophile grade turntable. And so I wanted to see if they sucked. So I bought this thing and I, I hooked it up and I will be the first to say uh, right off the bat as far as entry level products go, it feels really, really well built, but there are an awful lot of things about the C6 that scream cheap. Uh, case in point, the number one thing, <laughs> the platter covers the belt drive system. And while that's not wholly uncommon, if you want to switch speech, you actually have to remove the entire platter, stretch the belt over another rung on the motor assembly in order to do that. And that that's a bit cumbersome. I will say the platter itself is a hollow aluminum or hollow metal. It's very heavy, um, but it is hollow and it does have some natural resonance in it if you were to you know, flick your finger on it and whatnot. And the included felt mat leaves a little to be desired or a lot to be desired. Uh, that being said, it is incredibly straightforward if you follow the instructions, which admittedly, um, I at first thought it was broken because I plugged everything in, dialed it all in, and then hit the on-off switch, expecting that to turn the platter, when in fact, the on-off switch in the back sends power to the unit, the start-stop mechanism is tied to the arm. The C6 has a built-in phono stage, so if you're a little tight on cash and you don't have a phono stage, and maybe the stereo you own doesn't have a phono stage, you can simply uh, flip a switch on the back of this uh, turntable to give it a line out, in which case you can connect it to any 
stereo, old or new, whether that stereo has a phono stage built into it or not. And that's an incredible value. But all that being said, you know, once you get past the ergonomics of it and the setup, how did it sound? Well, to be perfectly honest, the, the C6 sounds fine. It sounds great, actually. It's very enjoyable. The Audio-Technica cartridge has a rich, warm, kind of, uh, I'll, I'll say a little bit heavier than neutral sound. It favors the lower mid-bass. So if you, if you like bass, if you like mid-range, um, this is probably gonna be a really, really good cartridge for you. The high frequencies are a bit rolled off and at high volumes, you know, there was a bit of sibilance in the, um, in the higher frequencies, that s, that s sound. Um, but that being said, the sound stage was good and full and wide. The center imaging was pretty rock solid, not as crystal clear as some that I've heard, but it's there. It's got really nice focus. Um, the dynamics are smooth, not as explosive, but by no means sluggish. The bass is, like I said, rich, full, deep. I argue that it probably actually goes a little bit deeper uh, than my cartridge of choice on my U-turn, but my cartridge is a little bit firmer, a little bit uh, faster with its bass, but still, on a whole, this is an incredibly, incredibly enjoyable table. But if this is your first turntable uh, and you are just getting into analog audio listening, um, there are easier solutions out there. I argue that the U-Turn Orbit at, I think like $20 more than what the C6 retails for is a better value um, and a better turntable overall. Uh, also, it is much, much more dialed in and ready to go out of the box compared to the C6. The C6 does require you to do all of the setup yourself. For $134, is the C6 a good, competent beginner turntable? Absolutely, absolutely it is. For $20 or so more, can you get a better experience? Yes, yes you can. I do believe the U-Turn Orbit at around $20, $25 more than the C6 is a better investment overall. But if you just don't have that extra $25 in your budget, you know, the C6 is fine. The C6 will play records and sound good and it will get you involved in the hobby in a meaningful way. There you have it. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I do enjoy bringing all of these videos to you. And remember, the only person that has to enjoy and love your system is you. Take care, everyone. Bye.